Hello everyone, I am Anthropomantic Fiend, and I do horror-related things on the internet. Today, I am doing another Rotten Recommendations video. This one's not going to be nearly as extensive as some of the others that I've done, but considering the current situation, I thought it would just be fun to do a list of movies that I really like. These are all mostly fairly fairly well-known movies, so I bet that most of you guys have probably seen all of these already, but sometimes I just start talking about so much random, obscure, low-budget horror that I don't quite feel as connected to as some of these movies that I forget the stuff that really made me love horror in the first place. And this is going to be a list of horror musicals that I really, really like. Horror musicals are one of my favorite things on the planet. I am a musician. My family are all musicians as well. And I've just grown up loving music, but also storytelling and horror especially and the dark side of everything. So horror musicals are just perfect especially if the music is good, and probably usually only if the music is good. This is just going to be a list of fun movies, and hopefully something that you can watch whilst stuck at home. So, the first of these is definitely one that probably literally everybody on the face of the earth knows about at this point, and that is Fan of the Opera. This is the Joel Schumacher directed version with Gerard Butler as the Phantom. This was probably at least one of my first loves when it comes to horror and musicals. I had actually watched the Lon Chaney Phantom before this. Shortly after that I saw this and this draws a lot of inspiration from that movie and especially when the Phantom is taking Christine through the mirror down to his underground lair. It matches a lot of shots from that scene in the Lon Chaney version, which just made me really happy. And obviously the music in this is fantastic. A lot of people sort of gripe about their voices. I don't mind their voices in this movie. I will say that they don't sound quite as trained as they should have for a movie that is literally set in a freaking opera house. But their voices still sound good and I, I, I'm easy to please and this movie is very pretty and the music is great and it's a great story so I absolutely love this movie and I bet a lot of other people do too so Phantom of the Opera is kind of the the big one for horror musicals. This is one that I didn't actually find until recently. It was around this past Christmas actually that I discovered this one. This is Anna and the Apocalypse. This is a zombie Christmas musical. I usually will not watch anything Christmas outside of December because I hate it when Christmas intrudes on other holidays, especially Halloween, but if there's zombies involved, I'm all in, so yay. This movie is really fun. It was based on a short film called Zombie Musical, which was basically this parody of High School Musical with zombies shoehorned into it, and I haven't seen that yet. I really need to, but this movie takes itself a bit more seriously than that, but still keeps sort of the wackiness of that intact in this. It is this small town in Scotland, or thereabouts, called Little Haven, and it's around Christmas, and these teenagers wake up on Christmas morning and they're stuck in the middle of the apocalypse and they have to fight their way to the school for safety and it's a musical. The music in this is a little more poppy than I would like in some movies, particularly High School Musical, but it's also really good music and obviously the lyrics and the content is going to be a lot darker than it is in something like High School Musical and it has a lot more sort of teenage angst in it, which I enjoy, but this movie is just really, really fun. There's a lot of fun zombie horror comedy-ness to it. It gets a lot darker around the end and sadder, but it's still really well done, and like I said, the music is fun. It ranges from stuff that has that sort of big anthemic poppy parody of High School Musical thing happening, but also more genuinely heartfelt, darker songs, and just really wacky stuff 
there's a song in here that is really this 80s power pop like Eye of the Tiger sounding song but it's about killing zombies and it's beautiful and I'm a little bit obsessed with this movie and recommend it to everybody for everything so I'm doing that now. Please watch this movie. It's so good. If you like zombie movies and if you like horror musicals you will hopefully like this movie. It, uh, it's gotten mixed reviews from a lot of people, but I just adore it so much. So Anna and the Apocalypse is a good one. Now this is one that gets no shortage of praise, and a ton of people talk about this one. That is Repo the Genetic Opera, and with good reason. This is directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman, who did like a ton of the Saw movies, and then went on to do other horror musicals. It's a post-apocalyptic story where people are getting organs transplanted, but if they can't pay the price for it, the Repo Man comes and takes it back. There's all kinds of crazy subplots, and the music is very dark and heavy, sort of industrial metal-ish, and this movie just has a really amazing cast, too. Everybody from friggin' Sarah Brightman, who originated Christine in Phantom of the Opera on Broadway, to Ogre from Skinny Puppy, the industrial band, who I love, and Bill Mosley, who is, of course, Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and was in House of Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, and he's in this movie, and he's singing. Most people have probably talked about this one at this point, too, so I'm not going to spend that much time on it, but obviously this movie is a lot of fun, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. This movie has been talked about to no end, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse for too long, but we've gotten into the Tim Burton movies now. Tim Burton is my favorite director outside of maybe Guillermo del Toro. Those two are like neck and neck. If Guillermo del Toro directed a horror musical, I would probably die. My heart would fail me. That would be amazing. Please do that. Tim Burton didn't direct this movie, which is something that a lot of people forget. They also think he directed Coraline, and no, he did not, so just know. Yeah, it says Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, but Henry Selleck directed this movie. Get over it. This movie is... A classic, obviously. Stop motion animation is beautiful. Songs are iconic. Stop arguing about whether this is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie, because it's both. It's literally about the convergence of the two holidays and the insanity that happens when that happens. And it is a kid's movie, but it's very horror-rooted, so I absolutely consider it a horror musical. It's very Tim Burton, despite being directed by Henry Selleck, because it's his story, and it does parody the likes of the original Night Before Christmas poem, the Rankin-Bass holiday specials, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and a lot of fun horror tropes as well, so Nightmare Before Christmas is obviously a fantastic movie. This one isn't as popular, but still really popular, Corpse Bride. This one really has Tim Burton written all over it. It's directed by him, it's stop motion, it's his visual style, it's Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter with a Danny Elfman soundtrack. What else do you really need? Guy runs away from his wedding because he's very shy and awkward and winds up in the land of the dead by mistake and accidentally marries a corpse and finds himself caught between the land of the living and the land of the dead and it's just really fun. Again, phenomenal animation, phenomenal music by Danny Elfman. The only thing I really wish it had is why doesn't Johnny Depp sing in this movie? He can sing, although he refuses to admit that. Despite doing musicals, he is like, you know what? My voice isn't that good. Yes, it is. Sing. This movie is really good. I've already said that. In this movie, Johnny Depp is just really, really awkward and clumsy and really fun. And I don't know why he doesn't have any songs in this because he's the main character. But Helena Bonham Carter is Emily the Corpse Bride does get songs and she's really fun. There's a lot of other great actors in this too. Christopher Lee plays this really overbearing, intimidating priest character and he's really fun. Again, not going to talk too long about this one because everybody has seen this at this point, probably. If you haven't, what are you doing with your life? This movie is fantastic and I highly recommend it. Another really big one that I think literally everybody has seen and is directed by Tim Burton is Sweeney Todd. Luckily, Johnny Depp actually does sing in this one and is really 
good, and he forgets that. The Hollywood Vampires, which is the band that he is doing with Alice Cooper and Joe Perry from Aerosmith, when he was talking with them recently, they did a cover of Heroes by David Bowie, and Alice was like, you know what, Johnny, you should sing this one. This one's closer to your heart. And he was like, what? I can't sing. And Alice was like, dude, you did Sweeney Todd. And Johnny was like, Oh, oh yeah, I did that movie. Stephen Sondheim, I really don't know what else to say about this movie. It's dark and gothic and very Victorian, lots of very dark humor, very gory, and really, really good music. It takes a lot of stuff that was in the musical out, unfortunately, including the Ballad of Sweeney Todd. They take all of the, the lyrics off of that, which makes me unhappy because that's my favorite song. Still, this is a phenomenal movie. If you want a horror musical, this is perfection. Those are all the movies that I own out of this. Uh, there are a few others that I wanted to talk about. One being the other, like, most obvious big, big horror musical, which is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. B-movie campiness and constant references with lots of sort of 70s glittery hard rock androgynousness and it's beautiful and fun if you get a chance to actually go to a big performance of it with a shadow cast and everything do that i'm often a little too shy to you know actually do anything when that happens but it's still amazingly fun so please watch that if you haven't i imagine you have at this point because it's a masterpiece and i'm not gonna go too far into it because what can I say about that movie that hasn't already been said? But yes, that movie is amazing. Another one that's fun is Little Shop of Horrors, which is the musical version of Roger Corman's beautiful horror comedy. I'm not as attached to that one as I am to some of these other movies, but it's it keeps a lot of the, the great dark humor and B-movie ridiculousness of the original while also doing its own thing and bringing this level of heart into it that wasn't totally there before, which I really appreciate. There is one that I did not see until very recently, and I didn't have an excuse to watch it until Freaky Girls Live decided to talk about it, which is Phantom of the Paradise, which is this, again, very, in the same vein as Rocky Horror, very 70s glittery rock opera version of Phantom of the Opera, but also with elements of Faust and Picture of Dorian Gray and a bajillion other things crammed into it and it's kind of convoluted and I'm not as attached to it as some of these movies but it's still a lot of fun and the music is great so Phantom of the Paradise is a really fun movie. The last two I'm going to talk about are, first off, The Devil's Carnival. This is another movie from Darren Lynn Bousman and the guy who did the music in Repo. I forget how to pronounce his name, so I'm going to put it down there, but they did another great movie with this one. I don't like it as much as Repo. I prefer sort of the bombastic heavier style of the music in Repo to the more carnival-esque stuff in Devil's Carnival, but essentially what happens in Devil's Carnival is a bunch of people die in ways that they're sort of not supposed to and get sent to this movie's version of Hell, which is the Devil's Carnival, where they all get put into scenarios based on Aesop's fables. That is basically the whole movie. There's also this sort of plot with the devil and his various minions and sort of his beef with God, which gets more talked about in the sequel, which I'll talk about in a second, but the cast in this is phenomenal. The guys who make these movies, Repo and The Devil's Carnival, really know how to pick people who I really like, right down to the people who are even just working on the soundtrack. I mean, in Repo, I mentioned a bunch of people that I like, but I think I even saw Melora Krieger, who is from Rasputina, who are an excellent band. She plays cello on a few of the tracks for Repo, or maybe more, I don't know. I just saw her name in the credits and freaked out a little bit. In Devil's Carnival, you've got Bill Mosley again, you've got Ogre from Skinny Puppy again, 
but you've also got Clown from Slipknot, Ivan Moody, Moody from Five Finger Death Punch, who I do not like, actually, but he is actually really good in this movie, and then Emily Autumn, who is another one of my favorite musicians, and she is a lot of fun as the character of the Painted Doll. Devil's Carnival is a lot of fun. It's got a lot of that very sort of dark theatricality of Repo, but in more of a carnival way. It's a bit scaled down from what Repo is doing. In the sequel, Alleluia, it's in a similar vein, but it goes more into heaven versus hell, and hell is gonna try and fight a war with heaven, and at the same time, we've got this backstory of the character of Painted Doll, Emily Autumn's character, and how she fell from heaven, and that's a really cool story. We get to see more of Heaven. God is played by freaking Paul Sorvino, who was uh, the head of Gene Co. in Repo, and he's very, very arrogant as God. He's not quite a benevolent God, although he tries to appear that way, and Heaven's not all that it seems. And also in Heaven, you've got Jimmy Urine from Mindless Self-Indulgence playing one of the security guards, and you've got the bookkeeper, who is played by Tech Nine, and it's just completely off-the-wall insane and weird, and I absolutely love it. This was definitely a shorter one, but I just wanted to talk about some fun movies and recommend them to you. So so those are my favorite horror musicals. If you're a fan of any of these movies, which I expect you are if you're even watching this video, or if you have horror musicals that I did not list in this video because either I haven't seen them or I forgot them, and you would like to recommend them to me, please do so because, again, they're one of my favorite things in the world and I'm always looking for more. Thank you for watching my video and hopefully I will see you in another one. Bye!